Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Conversations of Faith. I'm David Moore. This is Maritza Moore. Uh, most of you from Fusion Church know who we are, but just in case somebody is dialing in and don't know who we are, um, tonight we're going to jump into Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 and 2, just to, to, to launch out into Scripture. Beautiful passage of Scripture. It says, But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. For I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. Amen. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. What a powerful promise of God. Not only that he's always with us, but that he's protecting and keeping us. Amen. No matter what we go through, no matter where we find ourselves. Circumstances and situations may change, but but God doesn't. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, last week we were talking about, you know, bringing God glory. And um, I just want to, and I shared some testimony of what the Lord had mm -hmm. shown me in the mm -hmm. car. And, yeah, and I just kind of want to go back into that a little okay. bit tonight um, because I thought it was such a good word and it was so appropriate for the time. And maybe it was just me, but I don't think it was. No. And so I had look, more comments, I think, sent to me by individuals last week than, than in quite a while. I think it, a lot of people were touched. So one of the things that he shared with me last week was, you know, about our surroundings and new surroundings and circumstances don't create change. They reveal the bondage in us. Mm -hmm. And it's so important for us to get that perspective that, you know, it's not it's not shameful um, for us to be in the situation that we are in. But God is wanting us to move out of that. And there yeah. are certain things that 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 holds us back that are that are captivating us right now that are not beneficial for our future but they're uh -huh. beneficial for preparation for our future yeah so he takes us into new surroundings yeah to reveal what's 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 holding us back yeah. what's keeping us from being what he wants us to be liberated both in heart and spirit amen right? yes yes um we can't prosper in our new seasons or in the place with the shackles and and the bondages of our past and we right. a good example of that is when he was That's taking good. the children of israel through the desert through mm -hmm. the wilderness, through the wilderness yeah. you know when he got them to canaan he said i will remove I, you know he had already taken them all, through all of these things and he was already taking egypt out of them but when he got them right to the promised land, you remember, some of them don't want to go in. Some of them are scared. Some of them. <laughs> some of them. Three people, Moses, Caleb, and Joshua want to go in. <laughs> but, but he said he even made them the promise that there are people occupying that land, mm -hmm. and I'm going to remove them, yeah. but I'm not going to do it all at once, he said. Right. He said little, and this is in Genesis, it's little by little, as you are able to sustain the land, as you are, yeah. you, you know, because you are a people of bondage, you're wanting to go in the promised land that's flowing in milk and honey. Well, yeah. you have to know how to prune those grapes. Yeah, yeah, that's good. How are you going to handle all that blessing? Exactly. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's good. And they so just, they just they just make a bunch of wine out of it and get drunk, probably. <laughs> and so you have to be prepared to handle the blessings. So they're wanting new surroundings. They're wanting new circumstances. That's why they were crying out to God in the first mm -hmm. place. Yeah. But there are certain things that He needs to take us through. Yeah. So that he could take us in. Yeah. And yeah, and, and it's very important that we can see that that is what God is wanting to do in our lives on a daily basis. Sure. All every season that we come to, that's what he's doing. Whether there's seasons that we enjoy or seasons that we don't. Mm -hmm. This this 2020 has done more. I, I, I was sitting in just oh, recently and I was thinking, I wonder 10 years from now when we look at the church, how much 2020 will have affected the church. I don't even think we can begin to see yet mm -hmm. the impact of the seeds that are being planted of in what has season. been done mm -hmm. in people mm -hmm. through this struggle, through this trial, through this dilemma. I, I'll be honest with you. I, 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 I think it's revealing a lot of things. Like you said, it doesn't 
when we go into new seasons, it's, it's supposed to reveal our bondages. Mm-hmm. And, and people who I thought were solid and, and, and real in their faith have just become like lost and hopeless. And, you know, and, and, mm-hmm. and, and people who I thought, you know, were maybe on the edge and not really all the way in, but, but, you know, doing all right. Man, they buckled in and they got into the, you know into the spirit of the Lord. Drive and, that desperation and, drives yeah, them. And they have grown leaps and bounds mm-hmm. and had breakthroughs and and miracles and all kinds of things. And and a lot of it, you know, like I said, I, at first you kind of think, well, you know, I guess maybe they're not who we thought or well, you know, whatever. You know how the enemy comes and tries to play mm-hmm. with your mind. But the truth is, there's a revealing of what's going on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, some people when they see the need for God, they run in. Other people. Uh, flounder, they, God, why are you doing this? You know, they, oh, I hate it when it's like this, and I wish this was over, and and lose the perspective that this season is meant to give me something, to burst something, to strengthen something. But and and that is so important for us to see that He is wanting those things that we thought were part of our foundation. Yeah, you know, sometimes we you're preaching, you're preaching as pastors for years, you think, oh, they got it. Yeah. And then someone comes with a question. I'm like, where? What have we not been teaching you anything? Yeah. You know, and 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 so it really. Even Jesus said, you know what? We they're 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 eating milk because they can't handle the word. Yeah, the Bible says, you know, the, the word, meat yeah. of the word. And so it's really showing <laughs> us fall. where where we're at and what needs to be strengthened in our foundation. What. Because what can be shaken will be, be shaken. shaken. In this world, you shall yeah. <laughs> have tribulation. Yes. But be of good cheer, he said. Amen. Because I've overcome the world. Well, the Bible tells us that there are, uh, that old things must pass away. And, and he tells us also that we need to, he's remaking this wineskin. Yeah. And, and how do you remake something? And we've, we've gone through the potter's, um, what what do you call want to call that? I just call it potters. Potters heart yeah. renewal. Uh, heart renewal yeah. and 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 you see the potter. You know you see the the picture of the potter sculpting yeah. and and him clay on the wheel. He uh, the clay on the wheel and he's watering it and he's scraping it and he sometimes it Holding looks like he's it. bringing it right back down to the beginning and then it comes right yeah, back up yeah, and you're yeah. like wow. That's what God is doing. Sometimes I feel like I'm I'm jumping backwards instead of going forwards, yeah. but you know, some of those things that I thought have already or should have been removed. And God's saying, you know what? We just went to the first step and now we got to go to step <laughs> oh, two and man. step three, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, and so <laughs> just trying to do algebra with my son this week, I realized, oh, my goodness, there, there are things that I'm having to relearn and, and learn anew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and so sometimes we don't realize the steps that need to be taken for the Lord to remake yeah. This vessel, and you know that's what he said there in 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 I think it's Jeremiah, isn't it? where he's talking about the, you know, he went down to the potter's house and the, the 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 vessel was marred in the potter's hand, mm-hmm. and it says, and he remade it as the potter seen fit. Yeah, I think it's real easy for us to scrutinize and criticize people when they're going through some of those renewal things, mm-hmm. but that's just because we lose the focus that the potter is the one who remakes our vessels as he sees fit yeah he mm-hmm. seldom asks me if i want to go through a tribulation before it comes <laughs> <laughs> i probably would vote no if he would give me a vote <laughs> uh, we, we would but, have re- ended the season a long time ago yeah but when you look at back at all of those seasons in your life when you went through those things they were always setting you up for the next phase of life where you could not have performed at the level you performed at for god probably at times would have lost you know our our way our heart our mm-hmm. been been offended and ruined if it hadn't been for the things we went through before preparing you for those moments those remaking moments you know and and this brings uh, and we've we've talked about this several times in the past 6 months about Jesus being in the garden and he's praying to the father let this cup pass from me but yeah. nevertheless and the Lord kind of brought us to that place where we know that he went through the wilderness before he got to the garden. 
Yeah. And the wilderness um, being tempted of the enemy was yeah. establishing some things, yeah. not just in his spirit. His spirit no. was always with God. Yeah, he, but he had to fast and yes. pray for 40 days. He had to get himself that, ready mm-hmm. to be able to, to walk in the fullness of, of even who he was in the spirit. Exactly, because his fresh flesh needed to come to submission yes. to, to, to nevertheless. Man, if Jesus' flesh had to come into submission, how much more does ours. I hear people say, well, he was the son of God. It's like they totally missed the fact that, yeah, he was the son of God, but he come as a man. Mm -hmm. And the only anointing, the only authority, the only power that he walked in was through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Right? It was every miracle that was done. He didn't do it in his deity. He did it as the son. Mm Mm-hmm operating in the authority that the Father gave him through the Holy Spirit, that same authority that he gave to us. Amen. Praise the Lord. I was sharing with you earlier, um, I was watching this movie, and um, and I'll just share a little bit of it because I really think it goes really well with what we're talking about. Um, and, and this movie was this about this young man that was abused, and he was so broken by it that he wouldn't share this abuse. Mm-hmm. And um, his younger brother, because he didn't share it, his younger brother was abused at the same mm. uh, the same way. And so this young man formulated this thought in his heart: if I can become the strongest, toughest guy, so he went into the army. I will not be abused again. I will yeah, not be yeah. be small again. Yeah, try to overcome the weakness by creating his own strength. Yes, and he said um, to the world. Everything looked great. Yeah. He said, but it was when I got to that place where I was married and I was happy and my my wife wanted to have children. And he said, and then I realized just how broken I was yeah. because I was afraid that I could protect myself. I was strong, yeah. but I could not protect my children in every circumstance. Couldn't, couldn't be there all the time. Exactly. Yeah. And so he lost everything. He lost his family. He lost his marriage. He's, he lost everything because he couldn't deal with this brokenness. Yeah, he couldn't go forward because of his past. Yes. And so God needs, you know, he had built all of these things to the world. He looked like a success. And sometimes to, to the world, we look like a success. But to move into the next season, God is saying, you know what? There are things that I need to be remaking you in. He says, we're not to be whitewashed sepulchers. He wants to remake us from the inside out, out so that we can sustain the blessing that he has ordained for us and purpose for us. Yeah. So many people's Facebook page is full of smiles, but their real life is full of tears. Exactly. You know, we always present that best face forward as, as human beings, but yet... You know, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He said, Old things passed away. Behold, all things become new. Right? So, you know, looking at, at, at us as believers and those of the ones that are joined with us now, you know, just as we look within ourselves, can we say that all things are being made new? Is this wine skin being made new so that I can receive the new wine? Yeah. It's amazing those verses of scripture. We hear about them all the time. You know, Christians go to church, we hear these verses of scripture. It's amazing how many people refuse to be renewed, but yet they pray for new wine. Yeah. You know, yeah. and God's like, you can't have new wine until you are renewed because. The new one will burst the old back. You can't take it. Yeah. You you can't live the life you live with this present. You know. See this guy's life that what what should have been a natural progression of his marriage and mm-hmm. his life was shaken because there was brokenness. Undealt with. Yes. And Broken, so yeah. many times there are things in our life we're asking the Lord for a blessing here. Can you put me in ministry there? Can I serve you here? And He's saying. Are you willing to submit to me? I want you to give me glory. And so I want you to prosper in those areas. But can you, if you don't let me remake you so that you can be effective and efficient in your purpose? And so it it is God trying to be in us. Mm -hmm. And, And if we don't allow him, but it's only through digging in and diligently seek him. He said, you know what? If you knock, the door will be open. If you seek, you shall find. You know, he said, I stand at the door and wait. I'm knocking for you. I'm wanting to come in and sup with you. You know, he says, eat of my flesh. He said, if you, he said, drink the, eat the fat. 
drink the wine or something. Is, is am I am I quoting that right? Oh, kind just, of. Yeah. Getting, you're getting close. I'm getting excited, and he, <laughs> yeah, you no. know, but he's wanting us to diligently seek him, and that's what we were talking to about in Deuteronomy last week, because mm-hmm. it started off that verse. If you diligently hearken to yeah. what I'm saying, yeah. he's going. He said he the steps of a man are ordered by the Lord. Yeah. That's right. And and he has made, he said, I've made plans for you, and those plans are not to harm you. Right. So he's wanting to do all of these things well, we, in us. We don't like to go into those broken places because it's painful, and so oh, we course. shy away. But you're right. God doesn't want to harm you. He wants to take you into those broken places so that he can heal and restore, reveal lies and bring redemption, and enable you through healing and strengthening and empowering you by the removing of all of those things and the adding into the glory of who he is to prepare you for greater things. That guy probably could have been a great husband and a great father if he could have found healing mm-hmm. and you know a restoration. But like you're saying, you got to dig in. Those things don't happen because you go to church every mm-hmm. Sunday mm-hmm. or because you do a little devotional in the morning. There's a diligence. My my Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came in the flesh and still had to go out and fast and pray. And 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 at different times you see him. You know, when, the, when he's walking on the water, why is he walking on the water? Because he needed to get alone with God yeah. and just refresh and renew and, and, and get fresh focus and vision from the Lord, you know, for going forward. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So many times you see him do that in the garden. You know, like you said, in the garden, he's in the garden. We think of a garden as a great place. Well, in this garden, he's weeping as great drops of blood. His disciples are falling asleep. He's like, couldn't you stand with me for just a little while? The loneliness, you know, that that you see in his flesh. But yet the empowerment of God to let him boldly go forward and to pay that ultimate price. The Bible says for the for the joy that was set before him. Yeah. That hope <laughs> that he and has when you for realize, us. We're that joy. Amen. When he looked at the cross and said, I can do this, it was because he was picturing you and you and me and this fellowship, this divine fellowship that he couldn't have with mankind in this intimate level of him being in us and us being in him. And so for that joy that was set before him, he endured that cross. Amen. Amen. New situations being uncomfortable serves to show us that we need to move. We need that expansion. Mm-hmm. We need new ground. We need to encompass yeah. new ground. And and never like like never before, 2020 has shown us that we need to move into new things. <laughs> yeah. You know, this yeah. place that we're dwelling is not what Christ has ordained for his people. Yeah. But how many are saying, I want to get out of it. Because I want the new things of God, not I want my situation to yeah, change. Yeah. And so God is saying, you know what? If you want me to extend your tents, if you want me to bro- broaden your 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 fences, your your borders, then what is it going to take? Yeah. It's going to take us diligently seeking Him yeah. and surrendering some of our perspectives, some of our ideas yeah. of who He is and what He wants to be. You know, not for us, but to us. Yeah. Yeah. I think we've all had, everybody's had tribulations this last year, but I think some of the most daunting parts of it was, was the revelations of, you know, some, some of our ideals or, 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 um, <laughs> some, some of the things we believed about ourselves or about others, you know, some of those were exposed not to be accurate. Some of, some of the relevance, if you would, of ministry, mm-hmm. uh, for me, I think the honestly the biggest the biggest like hurdle that I had to overcome. I, I, I have to say I've taken most of this pretty good, um, but I think I think the lowest point for me was because you know I've been preaching for years about about you know we come to church but we got to go be the church, mm-hmm. and and the church was really growing right up until they shut us down for COVID. The church was really growing, new people were coming in. You know, there's just there was new ministry started and outreaches started, and you know, it's a lot of good things, and and I felt like the Lord had really used us kind of instrumentally in in, in in breaking that old traditional kind of church mind mold, um, and then, you know, the church gets shut down, which was hard. It was hard for everybody, and then, uh, you know, the the complaining and the murmuring, which I have to say, our church has been amazing 
about not doing those things. Uh, the six years that we've been a church, you know, gossip's just not been a problem. Murmuring hasn't been a problem. So proud of who they are in those areas. But then, you know, because of the pain and the the unease of the of the suffering and the, and everything being the way it was, and, you know, and then there's all this agendas going all over the place, you know, and everybody's second guessing and reading in, and there's all this suspicion and there's conspiracy theories and all this stuff, you know, and a lot of fear. So it was a really hard time for people. And then, you know, all these years of pushing in and, you know, we come to church, but we get, it's more important to go be the church. And then all you heard from everybody, here we, we have an opportunity to go be the church like never before. And yet so many, not everybody, you know, but I mean, I was just like blown away at how many people who were just upset because they couldn't go to church. Mm-hmm. No focus on being the church for, for, for some of them. Obviously, I could name a, a whole list of people who were, were yeah. jumped in and were serving and delivering food and donating food. And there was some amazing things. And, 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 and to be honest with you, you know, I, I, I had to get to a place where I had to just look at the good and refuse to look at the bad because I just felt like we were being what we thought were really effective in some areas. And then to see so many people who were trapped in this, we just got to get back in this building, you know, mm-hmm. almost like we've made a God out of church instead of being the church for God. The church became the bondage. Right? Exactly. And they couldn't function. Like people were texting and calling and, and, and I'm not airing anybody's laundry because I'm not mentioning any names, but, but people were genuinely struggling and hurting because of the lack of fellowship and the lack of, of, of church. And, and I get that. But it's like my image in my head, if somebody would ask me in 2019 how our church would respond in that in that capacity, I think I had fooled myself into thinking. And and again, it was my personal battle I'm talking about. I'm not I'm not condemning anybody. My personal battle that I thought that was the hardest was I think the enemy attacked me on whether or not we were really effective or not. Were (laughs) we really being good pastors? Were we really preparing people, Uh, uh, you know? Um, and of course, when the enemy attacks you like that, he brings out, if there's only 10 negative and a hundred positive, he'll only bring you to the 10 negative, mm-hmm. trying to get oh, you yes. to focus on those 10. So for me, the low point was in that moment when, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fighting the spiritual battle. And in, a lot of times when a spiritual battle comes, you don't know it's spiritual. It doesn't feel spiritual. Sometimes you, you you're in it before all of a sudden you like wait a minute, I know what this is, <laughs> you know, I know who I am, Yeah, kind exactly. of thing. And then when that moment happens, then then that, that light goes on in your heart and that witness comes back out in your spirit and you rebuke the enemy and you start declaring the good things and you start rehearsing the good things, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but that for me, that, that, and it wasn't like a moment. It was it was a few days. It was probably a couple of weeks. I just really was in a struggle. And I, why didn't I notice immediately that there's a spiritual battle? I just think God sometimes lets you go through these battles because the defeating of that battle is your declaration. It, yeah, it brings you to a greater appreciation and understanding of what you already knew. Yeah, but you appreciate it more. You understand it more. It's it's mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's more identity in it. You know what yeah. I mean? You know, I you, we all remember that that uh, parable that when the the lady came to the the woman came to the prophet and he said she said you know what I have nothing and my kids are being taken yeah. away to pay mm-hmm. this debt and he's he sent her to get vessels and he said borrow not a few. Yeah, yeah go borrow. A bunch. I think so many of us. We had, we've been living on very tiny little vessels. <laughs> and when temptation comes, when trial comes, we, we realize our need for more peace, more yeah. joy, less fear. You yeah. know, we're, when the trial comes and the circumstances come, we realize just how much we need him. Yeah. And I think that is the ultimate goal of a trial for us to run to the father for what we cannot, we cannot get anywhere else. Yeah. Because all she had was that little cruise of oil, that Mm -hmm. small vessel. Yeah. But it was amazing in the trial, 
how much God could do with the little with the little that she yes. had. And I think that's 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 a good indication of what what trials do. We, we you know a, a lot of times we take for granted our 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 gift, our call, our relationship, whatever. I've heard people say, "Well, I don't I don't even know what my gift is." Well, you're probably operating it all the time. You just don't recognize that that's a gift because you know our our, our western culture uh, loves to glorify just a few of the gifts as mm-hmm. though they're superior and they they, they they just blow over the others like they're not important mm-hmm. at all and that's not what the bible says at all about gifts sometimes yeah. just being you know gentle and meekness and and just loving people and some of those things have a major major impact on people's lives but we take them for granted because we don't recognize that the encouragers gift. this was your season yeah, the prayer, the <laughs> prayer <laughs> warriors <laughs> man, intercessors are dropping bombs all Ms. over Rachel the globe been telling us Ms. Rachel get, we're in a praying church <laughs> come pray come pray you know be, pray with us yeah and, and, and people well I, I don't do much because they don't get up and speak or they yeah. don't you know prophesy or they don't whatever you know and listen i'll take i'll take two intercessors over 10 prophesiers in a day <laughs> right because the the i just i just need to hear the you know i don't have to have 10 people telling me what god's saying but but i need 10 people praying i need uh-huh. you know interceding and because that's that's the importance of what we do and then when god speaks we repeat mm-hmm. right so and and i'm not trying to down prophecy as though it's not a great thing it is a great thing I think we make it something bigger than it is a lot of times and glaze over the things that really are much more important and valuable as far as as uh, on the everyday need. You know, mm-hmm. it's like I love steak. I, I, I do. I, I love steak. But but you don't eat steak nearly as often as you eat bread. <laughs> no. You know, no. and so I think sometimes we take for granted the bread, mm-hmm. you know, because we want that that rare steak and and. What I see God doing is 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 telling people don't don't overlook what I put in you because that is so valuable and so necessary. When you go through a trial and you turn this what's in you over to me, you will be amazed at what I can do with it. Yes, and and He needs that particular overflow that only you can yeah. have. And yeah. it's through, when He's filled you up and you start overflowing in your special purpose. Yeah. Then he is being glorified in that area that nobody else can glorify him just like you yeah. can. Yeah. Uh, and I, it's that overflow that's so valuable. Exactly. You shared this scripture um, on Sunday, and I just wanted to... No, uh, I posted it, I think. Oh, you posted it. Posted, okay, yeah. It was yeah. actually a repost from a, a former thing, but yeah, it was good. Joel 3.10. Yes. It says, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. You know, I I see this and it's telling you to transform what you have Mm -hmm. to make it effective in the hands of your God. Take what you got, use it for God. Exactly. Yeah. And so what are we allowing? Because we were talking last week about what in our life brings him glory. Mm -hmm. And so tonight I want to ask what in our life does he want to remove or replace? Mm Mm-hmm. Or to renew. make or renew yeah. to make room for you to be effectively bringing him glory yeah what is it wow, because there's good. so many of us we're going through these things like you said and and there's a lot of sludge that is rising to the top that are yeah. keeping us bogged under and so we can't see the rays of yeah. joy and glory yeah. that you know and so <laughs> I'm asking what is it in us? And, and mm-hmm. I think all of us should be asking ourselves that. What in us that God wants to remove, remake, replace? Right. So that we can give him glory. And what are we doing to make room for those things in our life? Yeah. Because that is our place. Right. He's the one that's doing the transformation. We are the ones that are submitting and surrendering yeah. to allow him to do that in our life. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing, going, just going back to the pot thing, because it just can't get it out of my heart. The the um, the the uh, the overflow the the pouring out of that little cruise never stops until until she runs out of pots mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. when she runs out of pots that's when it stops and when I read that I think how many times am I stopping before God mm. how, you know if, if, <laughs> if I'm a prayer warrior how many days have I skipped praying when God would have outpoured yeah. You know, if I'm if I'm to be giving, you know, oh, well, that's enough. I gave enough. 
well, but how much more would God have poured out if I would have continued in that giving yeah. or, or, um, how many, you know, uh, loving on people and, and, and praying and preach, you know, when you're preaching, there's this little funny thing called a watch. <laughs> and as you're preaching, sometimes the spirit is flowing so strong and, and it's just pouring out of you. And then you look up and you see maybe a couple of people. It's, it's funny because there'll be maybe like two people looking at their watch and then a whole bunch of people in the crowd that are just like really receiving and immediately you're like, oh, I guess I should wrap it up because because two, I wonder how and I know people that don't like long sermons won't like this and that's OK. But I wonder sometimes, do we stop? Do we stop because we've we've limited our opportunity? We 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 didn't borrow enough pots. We didn't mm-hmm. we didn't take enough opportunity. We didn't, you know, with our kids. Did we did we take enough opportunities with them or would God have filled it more? You know, just I mean, you could apply it in a thousand ways, but it mm-hmm. just overflows in my heart. How much isn't happening in my life? Because I didn't I, I didn't make enough room. I didn't make enough I didn't room. borrow enough pots. I didn't make enough room for him. Yeah. I didn't, you know. Because we dream big and it goes right back to what I was saying the other day. We dream big in the carnal. Yeah, we well, we dream big. But then we always just want God to do it. I read yes. a thing the other day. A um, <laughs> uh, uh, sister, uh, Diane, shared this thing and it said, uh, stop leaning on a shovel and asking God for holes. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And I think, man, we do that so much because our when we have big dreams, it seems beyond us. And so we're just waiting for God to do it. Not recognizing that God gave us seed. You know, when you ask God for trees, often he gives you acorns. The DNA you know, he don't, is in the he seed. He don't give you trees. He gives you seeds mm-hmm. for trees, right? Yep. And you plant those trees and you water those trees. Yeah, it takes time. It took effort. But then you have trees. I go over to Miss Rachel's, you know, I say Miss Rachel's because ours are still pretty small. But <laughs> you go by Miss Rachel's. I can remember when they planted those trees and stuff in the yard. And now her palms are beautiful. She has put so much fertilizer. <laughs> On those trees, it's Love so and much prayer. <laughs> work and time, but she has the most beautiful trees in her yard, mm-hmm. you know, and it's like this, this is the difference between a lot of people's lives. Some people are still praying for trees. Mm-hmm. Some people are planting, but they've never planted and they've mm-hmm. never watered and they've never fertilized because it seems so big and so beyond. They never started witnessing. Because they didn't feel like they knew enough. Not realizing the more you witness, the better you are. Give heard, what you have. Yeah. He, I, he saved me. I have something. <laughs> I, I've, I've, I've known people in the spirit. I know, you know what? I, I believe they're called to preach. And then maybe you say something about it. They're like, oh, no, 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 no. It's like, okay, but you've never done it. You're assuming you can't because mm-hmm. you never have. Yeah. Right? How, how much of us just need to start borrowing more pots and having making room for making him room. because so many of us I, I preached a sermon one time and it was a couple of years now and it t- and it talks about you know if, if we're not making room for him is because mm-hmm. most of the time we we are okay with him being our savior mm-hmm. but we're not okay with him being our lord yeah yeah and it's in that season because he was our savior you know just in that he yeah. saved us Mm -hmm. The rest of our life, he wants our complete surrender where he is the Lord. And if you, if you, if you are from any kind of civilized society, you know that anyone is a Lord over you, they get to tell you what's what. Yeah. And you take it. You take it. But the (laughs) other side of that is we often miss the glory of Lordship because nobody wants to be ruled. Nobody wants to be lorded over. Oh yeah. But it's. The, the Lord is the one who not only has lordship, but his lordship gives him that that influence and that ability and those resources. He can do so much more than we can. The so way. when we submit, our submission brings us into uh, uh, touch with his power and his authority and mm-hmm. his ability. So we are able to do much more when we're submitted. Yeah. Right? Um. God is is often changing our position, changing our condition, taking us through these things. But it's, you know, when when you've quoted that verse there, or when we quoted that verse you said I posted, I said learn to speak out of your position, not your condition. Mm -hmm. So we might be in a different season, but we're still his children. Mm -hmm. 
We might be going through a different trial, but he's still God. Our identity our has Father. not changed. Exactly. Mm -hmm. As far as in reality, our identity hasn't changed. But every time we go through one of these circumstances, one of these trials, one of these prodigal moments, mm -hmm. our understanding of our identity <laughs> becomes clearer mm -hmm. and, and it becomes more real and we walk in it in a greater level. Yeah. Right? God is always changing our conditions because they are the ones, like we said, that moves us to that place where we're purified. Mm -hmm. But our position as a child of God, called by his name and made in his image, is his yeah. reality. And he's always saying, mm -hmm. you know what? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. He's always wanting us to move into his realm, mm -hmm. his reality, where we can understand what being made in his image yeah. truly is. Yeah. So, so the prodigal coming Fair. back. Let's, we're going to stop. We're going to have to stop. But Fine. next week when we come back, we're going to go to the prodigal and we're going to break that story down mm -hmm. and we're going to see how that applies in, in, in the context of what we've been talking about. Okay. Amen. Fine. It's a new season. <laughs> Tomorrow's a new day. Amen. But God is the same and we are his children. Our, our conditions change, but our position has not changed. Amen. God bless you. We love you all. Wish we could be with you. Can't wait to rejoice with you again.